Today I'm going to be reacting to another British person in Australia and their experiences and this is a channel I've watched a couple of times before that Johnston life. Go subscribe to them, go subscribe to him, he makes some great videos about his life in Australia. I'm sure you probably already subscribe. Uh, but this is a living weird things I hadn't seen before moving to Australia. So these ones are always interested. I've watched a couple of videos like this before, see what people think are weird or different about Australia. You can tell me what you think about this list as well. Let's watch. In this video, we're going to cover the weirdest things I ever encountered until I moved to Australia. Now, the first weirdest thing I found was that crimes do happen in Australia. Hang on a minute, that isn't that weird. But the weird thing I did find was that the crimes were reported on the TV, and nine times out of ten, probably 99 times out of 100, they caught the person that did it. Now, I know what you're thinking, Ross, why is this weird? Well, in the UK where I lived before I moved to Australia, you never really heard about stabbings, shootings, serious violent crime. It very rarely ever made the national news, but you know it did happen. It seems to be that in Australia, serious crimes like this seem to happen so infrequently that the Australian media really catches on to the line, if it bleeds, it leads. I hate to say it, but more often than not, in Brisbane, we do hear about crimes that you think, ooh, wish that hadn't happened. But coming from a country that if they followed the same policy on if it bleeds, it leads, that is all that they would be talking about in the news, and they wouldn't That's have true. any time to report on anything else. Oh, and in the UK, it also seemed like they never managed to catch the person. And if they ever did, they also got some kind of pathetic punishment. Glad I'm out of that one. Do your kids know how to swim? Yeah, sorry, we're just with regards to that. That's actually very true, and it's not something I've really considered. Being from the UK a lot of the news is a lot of it's about America honestly about poly it's mostly about politics one side arguing with the other side is very very boring I mean if you've got to choose between that and just seeing about stabbings and killings every day I don't know which one I'd rather have honestly but it's good that they actually report on serious crime in Australia and about just Australian news rather than just being so American focused. I'm not sure, maybe in Australia do you get a lot of coverage about American politics, British politics, things that don't really matter to your country. That's definitely what we get in the UK, but uh, yeah, an interesting comparison to start that one. Do your kids know how to swim? And if they do, what age did they learn? Because in Australia, there seems to be a really weird focus on the importance of swimming and teaching young people how to swim. I mean, I say it's weird. It's not really weird, but it's a good kind of weird. Especially in a country where it seems like it's more common to have a swimming pool than central heating. And enough beaches in a country that if you wanted to visit a new one every day, it would probably take up a third of your lifetime that a focus on teaching young people to swim seems to be so important. If anything, the weird thing is knowing people who don't know how to swim. And more often than not, they seem to be foreigners. I hear Bondi Rescue seems to find a load of them. Why would you go that far into the water if you don't know how to swim? I bet you wish you learned when you were younger. Australia. Is that a common problem? Is there a lot of foreigners that are getting picked up by lifeguards in Bondi? And yeah, that's an interesting one as well because for me, I'm from Glasgow in Scotland. And I guess my mum and dad just never really had that focus on teaching me or allowing me to learn to swim. So I learned it when I was in primary school, maybe like, I don't know, six or seven, maybe eight, something like that. We went for lessons with the school and I was always in that much sort of middle level, wasn't really the best swimmer. But now we live in Malaysia. Again, it's not so common to swim like it is in a show. We have a pool in the condo, but... My son, we already take him for swimming lessons. It's not just about the safety. I also want to just that use that as a, a method to exercise and be active as well. There is a lot more focus here on it. And maybe it's just this time period being uh, that more parents want their kids to swim for exercise and so on. But what age, he never mentioned there, what age did people or children usually start learning to swim in Australia? Like I've got my daughter, she's about a year and a half. We're already going to start putting her in lessons soon as well. Uh, but when did you learn to swim? What about your children as well? Australians love to change names in some kind of way. And it seems that Australians don't even have any respect for if it's your own name. Whilst an Aussie granting you a nickname can seem like one of the highest forms of endearment, unsolicited nicknames can seem a little bit weird to someone new to the country. I myself have a multitude of different nicknames that I seem to get called. Roscoe, Jono, sometimes the occasional w I'm not sure if that's a nickname or not. It seems like in Australia, it's pretty common to call you anything but your real name. So if you don't like it, you're just going to have to get used to it, I'm afraid, mate. Or you're going to end up getting called mate quite a lot. Now, continuing on. Again, that's just like a, a kind of endearment thing. I love that, man. I would rather someone call me, like, 
a nickname and things rather than mind my, my real name that seems a bit too formal and knowing the Australian personality you can see why they do that I definitely think it's like a like a term of endearment unless you're getting called yeah the W word or stuff like that or the C With word the or anything like that weird that Australians say this one definitely confused me the first time I heard it but why do so many Australians say but at the end of a sentence. I now, even before I moved to Australia, it was pretty common with the fact that Australians seem to rise up at the end of every sentence, like they're commonly asking a question. But why would you say but at the end? Wanna go down the tab tonight, but? But what? Is this just a common Queensland thing? Does it depend on how bogan you are or how ocker you talk? How Australian do you have to be to but at the end of your sentences? Now I myself, I really try to be as Australian as possible and to integrate into my new loving country. But I just can't seem to but at the end of the sentence. But. Yeah, now it just seems so natural. But. Yeah, I, I can't do it. I'm just gonna have to try it out on new unsuspecting foreigners. Maybe they won't notice. Maybe they will. But really need to work on that timing. But I have never. Yeah, that's weird. I wonder if that actually comes from like the Scottish people that have moved to Australia because that's definitely something I do. I know a lot of the other people in, in Scotland who do that as well. Uh, maybe it's like some sort of like speech impediment we have. But I do that. But or like at the end of sentences, I try not to. When I moved to Asia, started talking to people, they started calling me out on it. So I sometimes try and make a conscious effort not to do it. Because it can be confusing for people who don't like speak English as their first language. Uh, but yeah, tell me if you do that. Did I just say but there? I don't Never know. lived in a country that has places such high value on qualifications. Now, I don't necessarily mean how high your level of qualifications go. Australians probably couldn't care less if you'd been to university sometimes. But what they do seem to value so much is if you want to be able to do a job, you need to be qualified to do it. And not just qualified anywhere sense. to their own Australian standards. Want to change a plug? You better have at least a Cert 3 in electro technology. Don't like the look of your taps? Well, you better make sure you're a qualified plumber, mate. And whilst I don't think that it's a bad thing to be qualified in the area that you want to work in, and I actually think that it stops all these rogue traders just pretending to be something when actually they're really not. Does it improve the overall quality of different tradesmen? Well, I'll leave you to decide that in the comments. But one thing's for sure in Australia, if you're not really qualified to do something, then you're probably not going to be able to do it. Get yourself onto TAFE, I guess. And another thing that Australians What's seem TAFE? to be so strict on is immigration policies. And coming from the UK, where it seemed like every person used to moan about migrants, I mean, that doesn't necessarily change so much in Australia. They seem to be moaning about me even more, driving up them house prices. But as a UK citizen, I used to overlook the fact of how easy it was to move pretty freely around different countries in the world. But you want to come and live in Australia? <laughs> Yeah, nah, it's not so easy. For a lot of people coming to stay for a few days, a few months, that's not necessarily the problem. But you wanna live and work here? Well, what country do you come from for a start? What can you do that can better the Australian way of life? Because if you can't contribute to this country, chances are you're probably not gonna be let in, at least permanently. Australia is one of the hardest countries to settle and live in long-term, but it's also one of the most desirable. Over the last three years of running this channel, I've been able to help hundreds, if not thousands of people in their journey to to make the move to Australia. But understanding the strict immigration policies of Australia is something that I'm no expert in. So if you want to speak to some experts for free, make sure you speak to our friends True Blue Migration Services. Mention us and they'll tell you exactly what you can do to move to this beautiful country. And unlike most professional people in Australia that just seem to want to charge you for the time of day, they'll tell you for free. Just make sure you upload an up-to-date resume and check that you've spelled your email address correctly. Otherwise, they might not be able to contact you. Yeah, that may or may not have happened to me before as well. I sometimes wonder how I managed to get the qualifications to teach, but there are... That's actually like the first ad I've seen I may actually contact them and that's actually quite good. So I've considered moving to a show but I have no idea where to start really but I completely, I, I just said but there, see that's that's that thing. Uh, but yeah, uh, see if, uh, I'm trying not to say it now but, uh, I, okay I, I'm lost. I agree with that, controlled immigration is a way forward. I know like it's good to bring people in if they're struggling in other countries and so on but you really should be focused on what people can add to your country to really benefit the country long term i really agree with australia's immigration policy i don't know too much about it i'm just looking at it as it's a controlled immigration uh, they want people who have got their qualifications have got experience that can add something 
that's the way it should be in every country really in my opinion i don't know tell me your opinion of that do you think assuming immigration's too high too low what do you think about the policies are some things that Australians just seem to make so simple. In the UK, I often used to wonder to myself, what season are we in? Now that's not necessarily to do with the fact that British weather is just so shit. The fact that you can genuinely be in one month, but the fact that it can feel like the complete seasonal opposite to the year. Exactly. In Australia, seasons are simple. Summer is December through to February. The weirdly cold months are June, July and August. And yep, if you hadn't noticed already, seasons in Australia run for exactly three months. What? One, one, three months. Want to know what season you're in? Just look at the calendar, mate. And then remember which ones are which. They don't print in the calendar what season it is. That would be too easy, wouldn't it? Now, when I used to live in the UK, one of the biggest problems, I know this is going to seem like first world problem, but one of the biggest problems seemed to be that when you went out for a coffee, where would you go? Which chain establishment would you love to deposit your money to in exchange for a cup of brown, sometimes hot, sometimes tasteless coffee. <laughs> Buying a coffee in the UK sometimes felt a little bit like a lottery. Where are you gonna get a good one? Is the coffee place that you finally found that does serve a half decent coffee overflowing with patrons so that you can't actually get a coffee in the next 30 <laughs> minutes at least? Australia so seems true. to be full of good coffee shops. Wherever you turn, even if you go to Macca's, even if you go to 7-Eleven, you can seem to get a half decent coffee almost anywhere. Having the trust that you can get a decent cup of coffee just doesn't seem to fill you with anxiety whenever you go out. Need a quick caffeine pickup? Well, there's a coffee shop. Well, there's one there. Normally both completely independent of a reasonable price, but who really cares when nine times out of 10, you're just ordering a flat white anyway. What kind of music do you listen to? Now from myself, if I did claim what kind of taste of music I had, I'd probably say it's pretty eclectic, meaning that I enjoy most different types of music. But there was one type of music that I didn't really experience and it felt a bit weird in Australia that it seemed so popular. I just often thought that country music was like Taylor Swift. And it turns out that in Australia, like most places of the world, Taylor Swift is also really popular. Like, that's not a problem. But I had never really been one to listen to country music. It just wasn't really a thing in the UK. I mean, you could get it on Spotify, but it wasn't really widely played on the radio. Here, you've got country music festivals, country music artists playing big venues. I even have friends that pretty much all they'll listen to is country music. And no, I don't sit there wondering why we're friends. We have lots of other things in common. Do I now love country music? I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm completely converted, that I'm gonna listen to it exclusively, but like the fact that you're also gonna hear some weird older classics in Australia, every now and again, they're gonna drop a country banger on you as well. And you know what? You're probably gonna like it, especially if it's in exchange for UK drill music. What the <laughs> f***ing hell is that? Now in Australia, they're always gonna tell you about the weird taste buds that they have. And no, this isn't anything to do with Vegemite, which is lovely, by the way. But coming from Europe, where they do often claim to have the best dips for chips and hot chips i call them hot chips now but what do you dip your hot chips in and i am also not talking about chicken salt which is also lovely by the way but how much of an abomination is taking sour cream and mixing it with sweet chili sauce now i don't mean Ooh. fully mixing them together but i guess if you did that it wouldn't be that much of a bad thing but getting sour cream topping it with sweet chili sauce and then dipping your hot chips into them or I've dipping never your potato that. wedges in them that's a fantastic that combo good. can you imagine hot chips, chicken salt, sour cream and sweet chilli sauce washed all down with a pint of Vegemite. I mean, okay, you're not going to do the last one. But if you've never had the sweet chilli and sour cream combo, did you ever wonder why there seemed to be a little bit of a hole in your Is heart? Is that common? Then that's I've probably not heard of that before. Thing. You need to try to feel a little bit more Australian. Australians are some of the nicest people in the world. Depending on your level of what you deem as polite, I mean, they like to swear a lot as well. But Australians do something for me when I go shopping that I swear I had never had done for me in the UK. Let me know if they do this in the country that you come from, but but where you're from, do they bag your groceries for you? The first time that they I do was that, in an Australian Malaysia, supermarket and the young person beeping my products through the till just started opening bags and putting them in for me, I didn't know what to do. And the next time they went even better and said, have you got your bags so that I can bag it for you? I was in complete shock. I came from a country where they would look at you in disgust if you didn't bag your stuff quick enough. My, how mm. much do you feel like royalty when all you need to do is put your items onto the conveyor belt and watch the person being paid a decent minimum wage do their job. Do they pack it all crap? No, they actually take care in their packaging. But if you don't want to have that full Australian experience when you go to the supermarket, or you just don't want to be the type of person that gives another dollar to the price gouging 
bastards that are Woolies and Coles, <laughs> you can always go to Aldi. And like the Aldis in the UK, they will literally throw your things at you after they've bleeped them through the till. I even think they're faster in Australia. Do you know what? I'm just going to buy my groceries more locally from now on. Probably get the best of both worlds. And if you're not sure whether Australia could be the country for you, or you want to just learn more about this place that I now call home, then watch this video. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, that is the case. Like in the UK, people don't buy, bag your uh, groceries. When I came to Asia, when I lived, came here to Malaysia and seen them bagging things, I, I actually still feel bad that they do it, man. I feel like guilty that I'm not doing it myself. The difference is in the UK, not even that, like when they talk about Lidl, when they don't even let you bag it, they, as soon as they put it through, they expect you to take all your things to another table and ba like bag it there. Uh, so Australia definitely a lot different to the UK. Uh, quite interesting, some interesting things there. What do you think about all the points he raised? Do you agree with them all? Is there anything you disagree with? Uh, but yeah, another great video. Go subscribe to that Johnson Life. Thanks.